Welcome to the Permian period, over 250 million years ago, long before the age of dinosaurs. The Earth was a world of extremes, where vast deserts stretched across the supercontinent Pangaea, and the climate grew hotter and drier with each passing year. Life was harsh, and only the most adaptable creatures could survive. This was an era of change, where strange and fearsome predators roamed the land, ruling an unforgiving landscape that was on the brink of the greatest mass extinction the planet had ever seen. And in this video, you are going to learn more about two of the most terrifying creatures that thrived during the Permian period. And these two were probably the worst creatures to run into during that time. You probably may have heard of the extinct genus Therapsids before, containing the largest members of the family Gorgonopsidae, predators characterized by long, saber-tooth-like canines. One of these predators was Inostrancevia, the largest of the Gorgonopsid species as it was, likely, the top of the food chain in Russia during the end of the Permian period. It is particularly known from its two huge saber teeth, up to 12 centimeters long, and are one of the perfect tools to kill prey. Its other teeth included six large incisors and 10 smaller back teeth and the mandibles that contained 14 incisors, in which eight of them are smaller than the others. These teeth were perfectly adapted for the hunting method of Inostrancivia, laying in wait for an unsuspecting prey. It would have bound after the creature using its speed to run down the animal, then bite the neck until it dies of blood loss or suffocated or both then it would have eaten as much as it could. Due to its extremely harsh and arid environment, it would have been a dull color like gray or brown to blend into the environment of the Permian so it could sneak up on its prey. This camouflage gave it a significant advantage, making it a highly efficient and successful hunter. But not only the huge teeth of Inostrancevia, but also the size of this fearsome hunter made the hunt child's play for him. After all, this predator was one of the biggest of its time. And even though many people always claim that size isn't everything, it is still one of the most important factors, at least for a successful hunt. With a shoulder height of up to two meters and a total body length of up to 3.5 meters, this hunter was at the top of the food chain and terrified all the other animals. If you had to put yourself in the shoes of any animal from the Permian period, what would be your first thought when you see this terrible predator in the distance? And yes, he has already seen you too and has his eyes firmly on you. Your first thought would probably be to run away. To be honest, that's the smartest thing you can do. After all, this hunter is one of the most feared predators of this time and he rightly deserves this reputation you wouldn't stand a chance in a fight. And even if you are one of the strongest hunters of this time too, such as Demetrodon, for example, victory is not guaranteed. And even if you won, your wounds would be pretty bad. So you decide to run away. However, there is also a problem here. With a speed of 50 kilometers per hour, Inostrancevia was one of the fastest hunters of the Permian period. 99% of other animals are nowhere near as fast as in Ostrancevia. And even if there is a long distance between the hunter and the hunted, the hunter will eventually catch up and deliver the finishing blow. But why was this predator ultimately so successful? Did it really just have to do with its size and speed? Well, although these two factors were also crucial to in Ostrancevia's hunting success, Many other factors also played an important role. One of the most dominant aspects of hunting success was the positioning of its limbs and its robust skull and strong jaw. Despite being a large predator, Inostrancevia's body was relatively agile. Its limbs were positioned more under its body than sprawled out like many reptiles, giving it better support and more efficient locomotion. This would have allowed for quicker movements particularly in chasing or ambushing prey. The flexibility in its joints would have enabled fast, precise lunges, 
key for a successful predator in the competitive Permian ecosystems. And on top of that, Inostransevia had really powerful forelimbs, helping it pin down struggling prey, making it easier to deliver fatal bites. These powerful yet deadly bites were only possible due to the structure of the skull and jaw. The skull was incredibly robust, built to support the long canines and withstand the stress of biting into large animals. As mentioned earlier, Inostransevia had two long curved saber-like canine teeth, similar to what you'd see in the much later Smilodon. These teeth were its primary weapons, designed to deliver deep, lethal bites to its prey. The long, sharp fangs were likely capable of puncturing the tough hides of large herbivores, ensuring quick kills. The size of the teeth suggests they were used for precision strikes rather than extended biting battles. The jaw structure indicates powerful muscles, giving it a vice-like grip allowing it to tear through flesh and crush bone if needed. This allowed Inostransevia to deal severe damage quickly, which was critical for taking down large or armored prey. These features of the skull and jaw, along with its exceptionally high speed, made Inostransevia a truly deadly hunter. But there was another factor that harmonized perfectly with the high speed, and that would be his high metabolism. As a synapsid, the group that eventually led to mammals, Inostransevia likely had a higher metabolism than cold-blooded reptiles. This would have given it the endurance to chase after prey or engage in extended ambushes. And it should be obvious that high speed combined with high endurance is probably the best thing that can happen to a hunter and the worst thing that can happen to the person being hunted. On top of that, its ability to generate internal heat may have also allowed it to be active during cooler periods, giving it more hunting opportunities in varying environments, which also meant that more poor animals had to beware of this hunter. Inostransevia's unique combination of size, agility, powerful jaws and lethal saber-like teeth made it a top predator. Its body was adapted to bring down large, often tough prey efficiently, ensuring it maintained dominance in the food chain. With its unmatched combination of power, speed and lethal precision, Inostransevia was truly the nightmare of the Permian landscape. Its dominance was a testament to its evolutionary advantages, securing its place as one of the most formidable predators of its time. The combination of high speed, agility, powerful jaws and strong body structure made it a top-tier predator, excelling in both ambushes and chases. With that being said, Inostransevia was definitely one of the worst creatures to run into during the Permian period. But while Inostransevia reigned supreme, it wasn't the only fearsome predator stalking the Permian landscape. If you paid close attention, I mentioned another iconic hunter, equally terrifying in its own right. Of course, I am talking about Dimetrodon. Dimetrodon was a formidable predator long before the age of dinosaurs. But what made Dimetrodon such a force to be reckoned with? What we can definitely say before even going into detail is that Dimetrodon is also one of the most fearsome animals of the Permian. Although it looks primarily like a reptile or even a lizard, the Dimetrodon is actually more closely related to us mammals. It is therefore called a mammal reptile. The name Dimetrodon actually means two kinds of teeth because it distinguishes itself from reptiles with both sharp and pointed teeth. Let me explain it to you in more detail. Most reptiles, both ancient and modern, have homodont teeth, meaning their teeth are generally uniform in size and shape, designed for a single function, usually grabbing and swallowing prey. For example, lizards and snakes have rows of similarly shaped teeth that are sharp and conical, used primarily to grasp and hold prey, but not for chewing or slicing it into smaller pieces. These teeth are typically pointed and are used to catch and swallow food whole or in large chunks. And the same goes for crocodiles as well. Their teeth are primarily designed for puncturing and tearing flesh, 
but there's not much variation in the shape or function of the teeth along their jawline. In contrast, Dimetrodon had two distinct types of teeth, the canines and the smaller shearing teeth, which is what makes its name special. But how did they differ? The large, around 15 cm long saber-like canines at the front of its jaw were specialized for stabbing and gripping prey allowing it to hold on to struggling animals and deliver fatal bites. On the other hand, the smaller shearing teeth, that are around 2 to 5 centimeters, which are behind the large canines, are designed to slice through flesh. These teeth were more blade-like and helped cut meat into pieces, making it easier for Dimetrodon to consume its prey. This dual function of gripping and slicing is what makes Dimetrodon unique compared to reptiles, which typically have a simpler homodont arrangement focused on one primary function, like grabbing prey. By having these specialized teeth, Dimetrodon was better equipped to process different types of food, making it a more efficient and versatile predator. But it wasn't just its teeth that made it such a formidable hunter, its entire physical build played a crucial role in enhancing its hunting abilities. The combination of powerful jaws and strategically designed teeth worked seamlessly with the sheer strength and presence it carried. Its overall body structure played a key role in its hunting success. With a strong muscular build and a robust frame, Dimetrodon was built for power. Its limbs were positioned beneath its body, allowing it to move with more stability and efficiency than many sprawling reptiles of its time. This gave it the ability to lunge quickly and maintain balance while subduing prey. And just like with Inostransphere, another factor that contributed to the hunting success was its impressive shoulder height of 2 meters, which made Dimetrodon significantly larger than Inostransphere, at least if we count the strange thing on its back. Dimetrodon is actually only about one meter tall and is therefore relatively normal in terms of size. So, strictly speaking, Inonstransevia is bigger, depending on whether you want to count the weird thing on Dimetrodon's back or not. But that is up to you. But what is this strange thing on the back actually, and what use does it have? The weird thing on the back of Dimetrodon is its sail, one of its most iconic and distinctive features. This sail was formed by long, extended neural spines that projected upward from the vertebrae, creating a fan-like structure on its back. These spines were connected by skin and possibly soft tissue. However, the exact functions of the sail are not really known. But scientists suspect that the sail served to regulate body temperature for communication or as an energy storage and fat reserve similar to the humps seen in camels. Now, if the sail really helped with thermoregulation, Dimetrodon could have warmed up quickly in the morning, becoming active sooner than other animals and gaining an early advantage in hunting. Additionally, if the sail also functioned as fat storage, it would have allowed Dimetrodon to survive periods of scarcity, maintaining its strength and stamina for when hunting opportunities arose. Together, these features could have ensured it remained an efficient predator even in challenging conditions. Its combination of power, teeth specialization and efficient energy use made Dimetrodon a versatile and fearsome predator, and definitely one of the worst creatures to run into during the Permian period. Although both animals are utterly terrifying, if we're talking about which of the two is more dangerous overall, in my opinion, Inostrancevia takes the lead. This apex predator had the full package for hunting success, an imposing physique, incredible speed, high endurance and agility, and a set of sharp teeth designed for tearing through prey. But in reality, it wouldn't matter which of these two creatures you encountered. Survival would be a long shot either way. These creatures, with their terrifying adaptations and dominance over the Permian landscape, were truly some of the worst to run into. So, while Inostrancevia and Dimetrodon were fearsome in their time, they weren't the only ancient horrors to roam the Earth. 
If you thought these creatures were terrifying, you'll definitely want to check out my latest video on the worst creatures to run into during the Carboniferous period. And trust me, things were just as nightmarish back then. Without spoiling too much, I am pretty confident you wouldn't want to run into millipedes that grew bigger than humans, or spiders that were almost three times the size of the biggest modern tarantulas. But it's best to see for yourself. See you in the video.